Elon Musk and the Tesla team just shared quite a bit of exciting information about their 4680 battery production ramp in the recent investors conference call. And I want to provide some context for statements that were made in that call. And what's exciting is a lot of this goes along with what I've been talking about in recent videos. So since we have a lot to talk about, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. One of the first things I want to talk about is something that Elon Musk shared in his opening statements when he talked about the fact that their production of 4680 battery cells has tripled in Q3 as compared to the previous quarter. Now the question is triple of what? What was Tesla producing in Q2 and what are they producing now? Well, um, as Dylan from Electrified shared on his YouTube channel, uh, in late September. At that point, his sources mentioned that Tesla was producing between Gigafactory, Texas, and their Fremont pilot facility around 110,000 battery cells per day, which gives you a run rate of somewhere around 3.7 plus gigawatt hours of battery production per year if you annualize that number. Something that really corroborates this was said later on by Zachary Kirkhorn in the conference call when he mentioned that the ramp was going well and that production was tracking to exceed 1,000 car sets per week this quarter, um, as was mentioned in the last quarter. Now, when it comes to what 1,000 car sets of battery cells means, a standard range all-wheel drive Model Y has 828 battery cells. So 828 times 1,000 is 828 thousand battery cells. If you divide 828,000 battery cells per week divided by seven days, that gives you roughly 118,000 4680 battery cells being produced per day or an annualized run rate of somewhere around four gigawatt hours per year. So this definitely corroborates what Dylan from the Electrify YouTube channel mentioned with that 110,000 battery cells per day. And in addition, uh, it seems like they're going to surpass that. So they're growing past that. And keep in mind, too, that this number very possibly includes Gigafactory Shanghai, which, as I mentioned in a previous video, according to one of my sources, Gigafactory Shanghai in-house 4680 battery production has actually begun. Moving on to more comments made by Elon Musk, he mentioned once again that the output of their 4680 battery production lines was growing rapidly. And as they ramp up 4680 battery production at Gigafactory Texas, they hope to incorporate more of these battery cells into vehicles being produced at this facility. As a reminder, Tesla is producing a small number of 4680 battery equipped Model Ys from the Gigafactory Texas facility, but they're also producing quite a few 2170 equipped Model Ys there as well. Elon Musk also shared some information that really confirms something that I talked about in a previous video when he talked about having a second generation of manufacturing equipment for their 4680 batteries at Gigafactory Texas. Among these new machines is very likely the three-in-one machine that I talked about in a previous video, which I'll link to in the video description. Um, but this three-in-one machine that I talked about previously combines the, the notching process, the electrode jelly roll winding process, and also the cathode collector welding process all into a single multifunction machine. So it's good to see that Tesla is installing a new, better version of their manufacturing uh, machines at Gigafactory Texas. The next big piece of news once again comes from Elon Musk when he mentioned that they're looking to produce 1,000 gigawatt hours of annualized battery production in the United States alone. As a reminder, 1,000 gigawatt hours equals one terawatt hour. So as Tesla moves towards their goal of producing three terawatt hours of batteries uh, per year by 2030, this means that one third of that battery production is planned for the US alone. This is something I hadn't heard specifically before. The next topic that was brought up was all about iron cathodes. And this is exciting to me because um, I'm, of course, a big fan of lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, one reason because they allow for cheaper electric vehicles, but also they're very safe and they have a very long cycle life. And so a battery um, with a lithium iron phosphate cathode chemistry should last longer than a traditional lithium ion battery with, say, like a nickel cathode. On their conference call, Elon Musk talked about the fact that there will probably be somewhere around twice as many iron cathodes as compared to other cathodes. And then he also mentioned 
the uh, manganese wild card as well. This is of course not new information because we know that the standard range uh, Model 3 here, the rear wheel drive Model 3 in North America that has um, iron cathode chemistry for the batteries. Also the standard range Model Y and the standard range Model 3 made in China, those also have iron based cathode battery chemistry. And at battery day, they mentioned the fact that they were going to be moving to a lot of iron based cathodes for their standard range vehicles. But they also mentioned there in the middle, the nickel plus manganese battery chemistry. That's of course what we see with the um, current 4680 batteries that were tested by the limiting factor. They had an NMC nickel manganese cobalt 811 battery chemistry. And then of course they're going to use high nickel batteries for their long range vehicles like the uh, Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi. But more interestingly, and some new news was shared by Zachary Kirkhorn when he mentioned, we're pursuing aggressively North American iron cathode supplies. So since he mentioned North American iron cathode supplies, that leads me to believe that Tesla is looking to actually produce their own lithium iron phosphate batteries here in North America. Um, that would be exciting if maybe, um, previously they had talked about not having 4680 batteries with lithium iron phosphate, um, cathodes, but maybe they're changing their mind on that. Maybe we could see a standard range, uh, model Y with an iron based cathode 4680 battery, um, and a structural battery pack. That would be exciting. And that would be a vehicle that I think a lot of people would be excited about as well. The next topic that I want to discuss was brought up by analyst Pierre Farragou, and he asked a little bit about the timeline of how long it was going to take Tesla to really achieve all the huge benefits that they mentioned at battery day for the 4680 battery cells. Once again, as a reminder at battery day, they mentioned a huge uh, range increase potential with these batteries, a huge decrease in the cost per kilowatt hour and a decrease in the amount of investment needed to build out the factories to build these batteries. In response to Pierre Farragou, Drew Baglino mentioned that at Battery Day, they showed a timeline out to 2026 for all the ideas that were proposed. And Elon Musk added that he thought they could do better than that, meaning that we could actually see um, really all these benefits before 2026. Next, Drew Baglino talked about the fact that the cathode facility that they're building there at Gigafactory Texas, which I've talked about in several videos in the past, he mentioned that that facility is coming together nicely. As a reminder, when you have raw nickel, manganese, cobalt, or other cathode materials, before you can actually use those in the battery, they need to be processed into their metal oxide forms and then combined together into this active cathode material. These processed cathode materials are quite expensive, and Tesla is looking to do this in-house at their cathode facility um, there at Gigafactory Texas, and then they can take those active cathode materials and put that directly into their battery production line um, and produce these batteries. So this will give Tesla more control over cost and supply of their cathode materials. This is of course a really big deal when it comes to Tesla reaching their goals to reduce um, battery costs because the cathode, as was shared in this infographic on the Visual Capitalist website, the cathode makes up for around 51% of the battery cell cost. Something that I also talked about in that video was also once again brought up by Elon Musk and Drew Bagolino. When Elon Musk said, we're also building a lithium refinery and Drew Baglino added in Corpus Christi. As I previously mentioned, and as was discussed in this uh, September 9th Reuters article, this lithium refinery in Texas would be able to process raw ore material into usable state for battery production. This is once again significant because in this Q3 call, Elon Musk also mentioned once again, when talking about the cost of materials needed to build electric vehicles, Things like battery grade lithium are still crazy expensive. Moving on, when it comes to Tesla's progress in ramping up 4680 battery production, Drew Baglino mentioned that no ramp is ever easy. And he alluded to the fact that challenges still remain, but they're making great progress. And he said specifically that cycle times have dramatically improved and yield has dramatically improved. Now, when it comes to 4680 production yield rates, this is something that we discussed in depth in a previous video, which I will link below if you're curious. But in early September, I reported that 
In an average day of 4680 battery cell production, somewhere around 1,000 to 2,000 4680 battery cells are deemed effective and recycled. Now that seems like a very low number when we talk about 60,000 battery cells. So let's say that with a rate of 120,000 battery cells, you're scrapping between two and 4,000 battery cells per day. That's not very many battery cells and that's a pretty good yield. However, as I mentioned in that video, there's also different grades of battery cells. So a battery cell may not be rejected, but it may not be an A grade cell. As a reminder, A grade battery cells are used in uh, electric vehicles, which have very strict performance guidelines. Whereas a B grade battery cell that doesn't have quite the performance of an A grade battery cell may not be great for an electric vehicle, but Tesla can use those B grade battery cells in their energy storage products, um, especially I think maybe the grid size energy storage products. And it does appear like from what I've heard from at least one of my sources that Tesla is using some of these uh, 4680 batteries in energy storage situations. And this could explain why Tesla saw a huge increase in energy storage deployments in Q3. The next topic that I want to talk about has to do with the Inflation Reduction Act and how much Tesla will benefit from that new legislation. When asked about it, Elon Musk mentioned that um, they do expect to fully meet the IRA's requirements. And once again, Tesla seems to be in a great position to uh, benefit from the Inflation Reduction Act because they have a lot of North American production already. And uh, they, of course, have their Gigafactory in Texas already ramping up. So. Um, it looks like they're going to benefit greatly from this Inflation Reduction Act. Now, when it comes to exactly how much of an incentive Tesla will qualify for, Zachary Kirkhorn mentioned that all the details had not been published yet, but hopefully they will be by the end of the year. And until then, it is difficult to determine all of the eligibility criteria. But he reiterated that they believe that Tesla is well positioned to capture a significant share of that for solar storage and also electric vehicles. Now, obviously, the Inflation Reduction Act has a tax credit for the consumer end. But when it comes to manufacturing, according to this DLA Piper article, which I'll link to in the video description, this legislation could allow for up to $45 per kilowatt hour of incentives for manufacturers, with $35 of that coming from battery cell manufacturing and $10 per kilowatt coming from battery module manufacturing. Of course, there will be a number of requirements that will determine the exact amounts Tesla will qualify for, but we should know more exact numbers in the near future. Now, really on that same topic, when it comes to battery cell cost, Elon Musk mentioned that they see a path to roughly a $70 per kilowatt hour battery cell, and he mentioned that specifically before any incentives. This goes right along with what Tesla mentioned at Battery Day when they put up this chart showing the trajectory of battery cell cost. And based on previous statements, it appeared like Tesla was moving towards $50 per kilowatt hour as a goal, but now it apparently is $70 per kilowatt hour. But if you subtract um, the Inflation Reduction Act from that, um, this could have a huge impact on the cost of Tesla producing batteries and other battery manufacturers as well. Moving on, when it comes to the Tesla Semi and 4680 batteries, we know that the first customer deliveries of the Tesla Semi are supposed to happen on December 1st. But Elon Musk mentioned that the Semi right now does not use 4680 batteries. This, of course, was really surprising to me because I thought for sure that the Tesla Semi would be using 4680 batteries from the start. Um, obviously, I believe they still will in the future, but initially uh, they decided to go with another battery format. Now. Are they using 2170 batteries or are they using 18650 batteries? I'm unsure, but it looks like either way, um, this could still produce a no compromises uh, semi. Because as you can see here, when it comes to the pack level energy density numbers for either the 2170 battery cell or the 18650 battery cell, um, those are actually pretty close to some of the lower estimates for 4680 battery pack level energy densities. That would still allow you to have a no compromises Tesla Semi without a reduction in the max payload. The last topic that I want to talk about has to do with the reliability of 4680 battery cells because um, Elon Musk once again uh, mentioned that Drew Baglino drives a Model Y equipped with 4680 batteries. And Drew Baglino mentioned that he had driven 10,000 miles so far with no problems. So I don't know about you, but I was definitely excited to hear all these updates on Tesla's 4680 batteries and their production progress. 
And it was exciting because a lot of these things, once again, uh, had to do with things I've been talking about in past videos. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also, if you're in the battery industry or the automotive industry and you'd like to reach out to me, uh, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Dot com. Also, I want to take a moment here and thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.